Hello and welcome to 5 minutes about Pulsar. My name is Christophe Bornet and I'm on a streaming team at Datastack. Today, I'm going to show you how to create things in Apache Pulsar. If you want to follow along and you don't have a deployment of Pulsar ready to go, you can go to astra.datastacks.com slash register streaming and get a free Pulsar instance up and running. If you have any questions about today's video, you can email us at pulsarquestions at datastacks.com that will reach the team at Datastax. We'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. First, let's see what are Pulsar Things. Pulsar Things are runtime components managed by Pulsar that consume data from Pulsar topics and write it to external systems. Here is an example of a sync which Datastax developed and maintains free and open source, the Datastax Apache Pulsar connector, which is a sync for Apache Cassandra. It writes the records it gets from the input topics to Cassandra, mapping topics to configured tables, and payload and key fields to configured columns. To write your own sync, you'll have to do it in Java. You'll need to implement the sync interface methods open, write, and close. The open method is called by the Pulsar runtime at initialization of the sync. As arguments, you get the configuration that is passed by CLI or API when you create it and the sync context that contains some information about the sync. The write method is called by the Pulsar runtime in the loop. It is where you implement the logic to write the records you get from the input topic to the external system. The close method is called when the sync is closed for any reason. For this tutorial, we will see how to build a basic webhook sync that gets string messages from the topic my input and calls an HTTP endpoint with the string given as a parameter named Q. The URL for the webhook endpoint will be configurable at the sync creation. Now let's write the webhook sync. In the open method, we read the URL field of the sync config and build the base HTTP request string with the Q query parameter. We also build a Java native HTTP client. In the write method, we encode the string we get from the record and append it to the request string. And eventually, we make the HTTP request to the webhook endpoint. We don't need to release any resource when closing the sync, so the close method does nothing. In the pom.xml, we only need Pulsar IO core as dependency. If you import dependencies, you'll need to package them with your code. This can be done, for instance, with the Maven chat plugin. Here, our sync only depends on Pulsar IO core, and that dependency is already present in the Pulsar runtime, so there's no need to package a Uber jar. We can now package the code for our sync. We get a jar that we will deploy to Pulsar. As HTTP server for the webhook, we'll use the Python HTTP.server, which is very straightforward to start when you have Python installed. If we launch an HTTP request using curl, we see that we get the request URL logged in the HTTP server standard output. This way, we'll see the request made by the webhook sync, including the query parameters. Now we start a standalone Pulsar instance using Docker. And once the Pulsar instance is started, we deploy our sync using the Pulsar admin CLI. We use the command sync create. We pass the jar we built as dash dash archive argument. We need to provide the class name of our sync, also the tenant namespace and a name, the input topic from which we will read the messages, and the custom configuration of the sync. We put the URL of the webhook endpoint of our Python server. We need to use host.docker.internal as hostname since the Pulsar instance runs in the Docker container and the Python HTTP server is on the Docker host. We then launch the command and see that the sync is created successfully. Now that our sync is running, we can use the Pulsar client CLI to produce messages to the topic we configured as input of the sync. For instance, we can send hello world and we see that our webhook endpoint is called with hello world as query parameter value. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please click the like button. That will make it easier for other people to find this video and grow the Pulsar community. If you have any questions or feedback, you can leave a comment below 
or email us at pulsarquestions at datastacks.com. That will go to the Pulsar team here at Datastacks. We hope to hear from you.